In our last class, we discussed Karl Popper and his philosophy of falsification. We are now going to look at an alternative framework proposed by Thomas Kuhn. Kuhn rejected the inductivist and falsification accounts for how science works. He studied the history of science and found that the evolution and major historic progress of science did not follow this framework. An example of this is the Copernican Revolution, which we'll talk about shortly. Kuhn also noticed that the falsification approach to understanding science did not account for the nature of observations and concepts as being theory dependent. Following his rejection of the current framework, Kuhn developed a new understanding of how scientific progress works. His approach was based on the revolutionary nature of science. Here, revolution means the abandonment of one theoretical structure and its replacement by another incompatible one. This diagram shows how Kuhn proposed the scientific progress curves. First, there is pre-science, which is characterized by total lack of agreement and constant debate over fundamentals, so that no work can be accomplished. Then, there is normal science, which is characterized by a paradigm. The paradigm includes explicitly stated fundamental laws and theoretical assumptions, standard ways of applying these laws to a very variety of situations, and techniques to bring the laws and paradigm to bear on the real world. This paradigm is commonly, commonly accepted in the scientific community, and the paradigm Kuhn suggests is what separates science from non-science. Normal science is work that is done within this paradigm. Kuhn described it as a puzzle-solving activity governed by the rules of the paradigm. Kuhn held that in the process of meeting normal science, anomalies would occur. Anomalies are derivations from the paradigm rules. Kuhn believed that these failures were not the fault were the fault of the researcher or observer and not inadequacies in the paradigm. This is akin to saying that blaming the paradigm is like blaming the tools rather than the carpenter. Kuhn held that anomalies are expected and do not constitute a falsification of the paradigm, unlike proper. However, if the anomalies are sufficiently serious and consistent, they may lead to a crisis. According to Kuhn, a crisis occurs when there is an accumulation of anomalies and failures and they reach a critical level. This occurs when anomalies consistently strike at the fundamentals of the paradigm and will result in pronounced professional insecurity within the scientific community and a great amount of scientific debate. Following a crisis, a revolution may occur. This is the abandonment of one paradigm and the adoption of a new one. It is a paradigm shift that occurs within the scientific community as a whole. After the revolution, a new paradigm is created and the, science, the process of normal science continues until, a new, until the accumulation of more anomalies and a new crisis is reached. Now we'll look at an example of this shift occurring. In the Copernican Revolution, the original paradigm was that the Earth was the center of the universe with the Sun and Mars revolving around it. Following observation of sufficient anomalies, this paradigm reached a crisis, which resulted in revolution. The new paradigm held that the Sun is the center of the universe with Earth and Mars revolving around it. This paradigm will be the framework for normal science to continue until a point where a new crisis is reached. Stay tuned for part two as we explore Kuhn's paradigms in more detail. See you soon!